Just to let you know, the video you are about to watch, I kind of jump all over the place. I am a little bit tired. I was doing a little bit more research before I posted this. Hey YouTube, this is going to be a video response to the Prince of Melath. More on his video of Star Trek Online and the impl implications of becoming free to play. And I can't speak a word today. I don't know why. It is part of his MMO Anthropology series. It's actually a very good series. I suggest you subscribe to him. and uh, I think you'll like it. But he's been doing the Star Trek. He did the Star Trek Online. And that's a game I've been playing for a good couple months now. And uh, so I've seen some of what the implement implications are for going free to play. The f one of the downsides that I've seen is there's some hatred towards people that are coming in on the free to play. Most of these you'll find from older people. Uh, not older people, but people that have been playing for a longer period of time. The thought or action behind it is they've been paying for a game for X amount of time. Most of them are since the game started two years ago. Um, and then now you got these people. They worked through all the bugs. They paid while they were working through all the bugs. In which Star Trek Online, from what I've heard, used to be an extremely buggy game. There's still bugs here and there. I experienced some. Well, I was actually playing with the Prince of Melav for a little while. Um. <clears throat> all in all, there's, from what I've also heard, is it's not as bad as it used to be. One of the major things that I've noticed with the free-to-play is there are certain fleets that are going, okay, let's clear out some of our rousters. My fleet, the fleet that I'm in has done that too. After I discussed it with uh, the prince, I'll call him, <laughs> uh, I started chatting with other guild members some of the more high-ranking guild members. And then I found out that almost everybody that I got kicked, except for one person, they admitted it was an accident, have been inactive for four months or longer. The, the uh, argument that had occurred with the upper-ranking members of the fleet and then wound up tearing down and kind of turned into a little controversy, I guess, is that without any kind of meeting with the upper members, one of the fleet founders just cleared out the inactive people without actually alerting anybody, without telling anybody. And the way our fleet kind of operates, they operate kind of like a federal representative government probably a little bit more limited. So some people had a problem with that lack of transparency or whatever. Ultimately, I think it went good. They purged like 200 people from the fleet roster. I mean, and when they went free to play, I I have to admit I had a few speculations on what was going to happen. I trade on the Dilithium exchange in the game it's pretty much you have dilithium points and you trade them for cryptic points or vice versa but you see I figured there would be more people trying to buy cryptic points than there would be people selling cryptic points so the price of cryptic points per dilithium would go up uh, at the end of December the price of cryptic points was 350 dilithium points per cryptic point. 
right now it's limited. They actually have a limited range. They can go for either 50 cryptic points all the way up to 500 cryptic points. And I'm pretty sure that if the market winds up, market forces wind up bringing it up to close to 500 cryptic points, um, cryptic studios or whoever owns it now will expand it probably up to 5,000 or more. In my comment on his video, I had even said that they kicked out active members too. Upon me chatting with some more upper level members after my conversation with him, I had discovered that the active members weren't as, were more speculation from the lower members. And I don't, like I said, only one active member that I know of got kicked without warning, without people knowing about it. And when I was looking through the roster, I was recognizing names that I've seen online through in the guild, but they don't do anything. They're never in any of the guild events, though I have to admit. <clears throat> I haven't been to a guild event in two months, so... I'm not going to say nothing about people that don't participate in guild events. And I've never once seen them chatting with the guild. There are days that I don't chat, I don't say nothing to the guild. But I tend to say something. If I'm on three times a week, I'll try to say something at least once. Um... Oh, sorry, this video's all over the place. I'm going to have to do some editing. But the weird thing with the dilithium and cryptic points was I noticed it went the other way. That is to say, this morning when I looked at the value of cryptic points per, I mean, dilithium per cryptic point, it went from 350, which is at the end of de December, to 262. And it might even go lower than that, which tends to suggest that people are actually buying cryptic points to purchase dilithium. Dilithium is needed to buy ships. If you're a silver member, you don't get the free ship token. Um, for anybody that is wondering, the free ship token, every time you pr get promoted in rank from lieutenant to lieutenant commander or lieutenant commander to commander, vice versa, Except for if you get promoted to Vice Admiral, you get something called a free ship token, which pretty much you go to an Earth space dock, you go to the ship requisitions, and they give you a ship of your particular class. As long as you don't have to spend cryptic points for it, you're allowed to purchase it. My primary objection is when they went over to the free-to-play method, they decided to make all the Vice Admiral ships, um, they required that they be purchased with cryptic points. Which is bad for me because I wanted the Galaxy Class Command Cruiser with saucer separation. But that's just me being butthurt that I'm going to have to pay some real money for it. Or wait till I get a stipend. One of the benefits when they came out with the free to play was people that are like me who intend to stay paying for it. We get a 400 cryptic point stipend. They say the catch is you can only spend it in um, Star Trek Online. I forget the other game that Cryptic Studios. Uh, that Cryptic Studios was responsible for making. So I'll Google search it. Alright, the other game that Cryptic Studios is Champions Online that uses Cryptic Points. Other, Cryptic Studios is known for, mostly for the City of Heroes and the City of Villains. 
So they're they got a pretty well known name. I like the way they introduced free to play, which was kind of slow. And in December they had the invitee only. In which I don't know if they still have it, they might. They actually have a plan, I'm gonna call it a platinum membership. <clears throat> because they do provide more benefits for it. It's called a lifetime membership. It's like $300 to get in. Benefit is you don't have to pay a monthly fee. but That's like a two years in advance. You get to have your, play, your playable character as an, a liberated Borg which has a lot of enhancements. You get to sit at the captain's table in which there's a scene in the Prince of Malab's video in which he is looking outside of Earth's space dock and he says that he wishes you'd see ships flying around. Maybe not with their names above it, but you'd see ships flying around. But you also see this... Um, thing sitting out in the middle of space that's more or less the captain's table. It comes from the novel series The Round Table. The Captain's Round Table which is allegedly or supposed to be devoid of time. It's known to have Captain Jonathan Archer, uh, Captain Kirk, and Captain Catherine Janeway visit at the exact same time. I don't know how they did it. I know it's based off of a book series. Not even a canon book series, but more like a fan fiction book series. So, Well, that's it. I hope that does some work. I'm sorry I was all over the place in this video.